Good morning. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. Friends, it's already warmer than it was yesterday. That's a good sign, okay? And you've already come into worship this morning. You're already chatting with one another. I want you to take it all in and remember why it is that Grace Presbyterian Church exists in the world. We are here to cultivate vibrant spiritual community with one another, okay? Which requires a little vibrancy from us, okay? Now, I get it. It's a little early, okay? And part of the reason why Sheila's here is to help us get to that vibrancy this morning, okay? But the first thing that you can do to help one another create that vibrancy is to do one of these and to look at someone with that, okay? <laughs> to smile, to see one another, to delight in the fact that there are other people here with you this morning to worship, that you're not doing this alone and by yourself. Because if that's what you wanted, there's a trail right out there, okay? If that's what you needed this morning, worshiping on your own, it's right out there. But you have come into this place with this group of people. And so together, we pursue that vibrant community with God and one another. I have several announcements for us this morning. First off, I want you to take a look at this tree right here, okay? This is the tree of generosity right here. This is the tree of you going, you know what? I could volunteer on a Sunday morning. I could walk in and I could be a greeter. I could be an usher, okay? I could help out. And if you ever wonder what it means to be a greeter and usher, you just take one of these cards and all of a sudden, you become one, okay? And God gives you all the gifts that you need in that moment to be a greeter or usher. If you have a hard time smiling, all of a sudden, you will have the best smile in the whole world, okay? If you have a hard time shaking hands and saying hello, all of a sudden, you will have that gift, okay? So friends, this is what we're asking you to do. So when you come in on Sunday morning, if you haven't volunteered to do something, go, you know what? I could do one of these things. And you take it, and magically and miraculously, you become that thing, okay, friends? Can you do that when you walk in on a Sunday morning? Don't avoid the tree, okay? <laughs> Don't avoid it, okay? This isn't a Garden of Eden situation right here, okay? This is go straight to the tree. Cindy. Have any questions? See Cindy if you have any questions at all. Yeah. The, that day, that morning when you walk in, okay? These are not things you have to prepare for, okay? Even those of you who are like, I don't know if I can count all the people for the attendance part of the ushering thing. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, you were given everything you needed in kindergarten, okay? <laughs> Next piece, I want you all to turn to that camera up there and wave to our online viewers this week. We are glad and excited to know that worship doesn't just mean us right here in the room. It means lots and lots of folks throughout the week and month. If you're sitting on the ends of those aisles, I want you to take those friendship pads. I want you to sign in your name. Let us know that you're here. Pass it to the person next to you. And as I like to say, hold on to it for an extra second so that the person has to look up at you and wonder what you're doing and then smile at them once again. <laughs> Today, I want you to stay after the service. I want you to walk down this hallway down here. I want you to enter the office area because we have intermission almost every single Sunday between the services. And today we are going to be covering our book, Having the Mind of Christ, and I'm leading it today, okay? So, and I have a competition going with all the other people who are teaching this class that I can bring out more people than they can, okay? So, do me a favor and show up today, okay? <laughs> Next, there's one service on May 5th. Next Sunday is April 28th. Sunday after that is May 5th, okay? One service that day at 10.30 a.m. 
We've been doing these like quarterly one service Sunday so that we can all worship together as the whole of Grace Presbyterian. And on that day, on May 5th at three o'clock in the afternoon is the ordination service for Danny Hillier, okay? It's at 3 p.m. It's at Columbine United Church. This is a church that Danny was raised in, that she was baptized in. She's coming full circle in her faith and calling right over there. So we want you there as well. Make sure you're there to celebrate. Lots of other things on the screen. Make sure you're paying attention to those. With that, let us stand. Yeah, Yeah, let's stand and worship this morning. be seated this morning. As you take your seat, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think about that question we asked you on the name tag this morning. I want you to think about your hobbies this morning. I want you to think about the things that you really enjoy doing in life. 
And as you are there in that space, I want you to think about how God has uniquely created you. That God put together you and creation and these things in our lives that you enjoy, that you play, that you learn, that you participate in. And as you're thinking about all of that, I want you to consider that part of your best self, that part of your best self is found in these places, these places of enjoyment, these places of wonder, these places of play, these places of ability. Now I want you to shift your mind to something else. I want you to shift to something that you consider to be a need in the world. Maybe it's a problem, maybe it's an issue, maybe it's just something that you think, wow, the world or a person in my life needs this. And I want you to begin to think about how that place of hobby and that place of need intersect. Where there's something about this world that we really enjoy and this world of need where they come together. And that in you discovering a part of who you are and in you reminding yourself of what the world needs, that there is a calling There's a vocation. There's a place where the best of you and the worst parts of life come together. And there in those places, God says, let there be light. And I want you to open your eyes. And there was light. Friends, God is calling each and every one of us into the places of need in our world. And so often we come to those places thinking that we have nothing left to give. But I promise you that there's these other places in your life where you do have something, where you are provided fuel and wonder and energy and imagination. Maybe it's just simply rest because there are good places in the world and those two things can come together and when they do oh therein lies the entirety of most of our life right there if we can just pull these things it's in this space that traditionally was called confession and assurance where two things were pulled together one all of these things that I don't want or like about myself. And then this other piece, God saying, you are my beloved. I love you. Let there be light. Let there be forgiveness. And as those two things pulled together, therein was the magic and the miracle. May you know that today as we stand and do our grace blessing together. Kate, can I interrupt them back there for a moment? Could I bring them up here for our grace blessing? We have our little play area. Some people have been calling it a pray ground. Uh huh, right? There you go. Just say something really quick. Yeah. We have the coloring back there for times when maybe they don't have a lot of nursery staff. Yeah. But it doesn't mean they're not listening because, Hannah, do you want to tell them what you just told me about God? God is everywhere. God is everywhere and also in our hearts. And then Asia, of course, was like, God is listening, but she is not. So that's it. <laughs>
I love it. I love it. Can you all do our grace blessing together with me this morning? Yeah, totally. Maybe we should all do what you're doing this morning too with it, okay? So for Asia's sake this morning, when we get done doing the grace blessing, I want you to kind of flop back into your chair. Can you do that this morning? Okay. Can you all lead us and then I'll have them join in saying, grace in me, grace in you, grace in all of us and congregation. Grace in me, grace in you, grace in all of us. Hey, friends, you have a name tag on this morning. Greet some people this morning with the peace of Jesus Christ and find out about their hobbies. This is, yeah, you do. This is in the key of C.
let's do that one more time. Everybody. did harmonies right there. Thank you for that. You may be seated. <clears throat> we continue in this series in the book of John. So our scripture passage comes from 1 John chapter 3 verses 16 through 24. Listen to God's word as it comes to us today. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and in action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given to us. And here our scripture passage ends for the day. May the Holy Spirit grant us stand and how to apply such a text to our lives. We, the people of the United States of America, some of you got really excited and some of you looked at me like, dear God, I need to exit as soon as possible but just sit a while. Believe me, I don't like to get too political when I preach. And I've been back and forth all week with this message with God, like, mm, I'm not gonna preach this message. I wanna do something different. And I kid you not, it was Wednesday this week and I was like, I'm changing the whole sermon, I don't like it. And I stopped at a red light and the car in front of me, the license plate said, we the people. And I was like, is this a sign that I need to go forward, God? <laughs> it's how God and I communicate throughout the week. So here we are. It's gonna be a little political today, but it's gonna be okay. I promise you. I once had a friend of mine uh, who's also a pastor said that if you can preach it in Washington, D.C., then you should also be able to preach it in a third world country because truth is universal. And while I agree with what he was saying, at the same time, as a pastor, you have to care for people where you are. You have to be relational. You have to be relatable. And we, the people of the United States, have a great responsibility this upcoming year. It's an election year. I was having coffee with a colleague of the Denver Presbytery recently, and she said, how are you going to handle you know, the divisions of this election year? How are you going to preach and teach with all these politics and the divisions in our country? And to be quite honest, I was caught off guard. I was like, oh, well, I hadn't thought about that yet. But you're right. And now this is also because I have to check myself constantly. Sometimes I live in like a, a spiritual la-la land throughout the week and I have to ground myself. Not to say that I'm like high and holy, believe me, I'm very human and I have all my flaws, but I do try every single day to see the world through a spiritual lens, to see the world through this spiritual human experience. That sometimes it's a fault that when things of this world happen and debates and divisions, I kind of get off my rocker. My husband and I watch the news together often and I have tears in my eyes most of the time, like what is going on? And he's like, Danny, if you paid attention to history, actually this pattern makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so he grounds me. But I recognize this election year is already ramping up. It's April, we vote in November. 
And yet there's all these divisions already, all this, these issues. We watch it every day on our headlines with the news. It's exhausting. The last place you want to hear it is at church. We become so good at compartmentalizing our lives, right? This is who I am at church. This is who I am at work. This is who I am in my community, as a neighbor, as a family member. We have all our hats that we rotate throughout the week. And while, yes, that's appropriate to hold different postures in different situations, at our core, we are hopeful people. At our core, we are resurrected people. At our core, we are hubs of hope. And how do we carry this hopeful posture in every setting that we get to go into, especially political settings, especially the voting booth. We are hubs of hope. And this week's sermon is our hope in action. And what a beautiful text from 1 John to reflect on what it means to, to propel forward in action, that our hope allows us to move forward And so today, it's a bit political because when we talk about action in 2024, we can also talk about the actions of voting, the actions of making change in our world and in our communities. Now, if you thought if at one point or another in this sermon, I'm going to tell you which side to vote for or what to vote on, I'm going to disappoint you because truth be told, I couldn't care less how you vote. I know, a little bit of a controversial statement. Some of you disagree. Some of you think that the platform of a pastor needs to tell you to vote one way or the other. But not me. There's other pastors that might say that, but I truthfully don't care how you vote. I care that you vote because it's your right and it's your privilege. I care that you pray over every box that you check but hold true to your convictions because you've had a human experience that has caused you to vote the way that you vote. You've had life experiences that have convictions within your heart and that's why you stand on one side or the other. But in this sermon series through 1 John, as we started out, we talked about light and darkness, right? Do you remember that? But it but not in the terms of good versus evil or good versus bad or right versus wrong, because that's not what it's about at all. That's not how we vote either. The light and darkness is about the knowing and the unknowing. We know Christ. We know the resurrection. We know the truth, as Justin said a few weeks ago, that the truth is not anything the world tells us, but is that, that flesh, that risen Christ with the wounds, that's the truth. How do we carry that with us every day and propel forward in action with that kind of hope? So I want you to consider what this passage is telling us. That when we love people, it's not in word and speech. The the world is really full of all kinds of words and speeches right now, isn't it? We listen to them often. But that's not what changes the world. Your vote's not what changes the world. What changes the world is action and love. This entire passage is rooted in love. That very beginning of Christ laying down his life in love, that we may lay down our lives for our siblings, that we may extend our offerings to our community and to our world. Love is what changes the world. We, the people of the United States of America, did you? Do you catch that beginning, we the people? It's not I, the president. It's not I, the person. It's communal. It's we, the people. Because at the end of this year, 
in January of 2025, there's gonna be a president in the house. Some of us are gonna be very excited. Some of us are gonna be very upset. Some of us are gonna be like, okay. And change will happen, step by step. But that president's not who changes our world. That president's not what offers hope in our communities. That's our job. We, the people of grace, we, the people of hope, we are called to make those changes. We don't just pray to God to solve all of our problems. We pray and we act. We pray and we love people. So we vote and we do the work because we make the changes in the world. And how are we the people doing? We the people are tired. We the people are irritable. We the people are anxious. We the people are depressed. We the people are addicted, are isolated, are angry. We the people are in survival mode, it seems. I'll tell you a a quick story. It was a few weeks into after our son was born, living into that newborn fog. And as a family of four, and I woke up one morning, I looked at my husband, I said, I I just got to get out of the house. I just got to, I just got to go. He's like, where are you going to go? I was like, I don't know. Give me the keys. I just got to go. Take the kids. He said, okay. So I got behind the wheel and As mom's cars typically do, it gravitated towards the Target parking lot. (laughs) It just happens. It's like a magnet. Justin's laughing because I've ran into his wife several times there. No kids, no husband, just, hey, what you shopping for? Nothing. I'm just, I'm just here. Yep, yep. And as I'm pulling into my parking spot, this person with a shopping cart leaves the shopping cart in the middle of the spot and, and walks away. And I'm like, literally like, I'm, do you see me? I haven't been out of the house in a while, but okay. So I find a different parking spot. And then I go inside and before you can start your Target shopping trip, you gotta go to the Starbucks and the Target. They're very strategic, those targets. So I'm standing in line and I'm next in line and the person has finished their order and I pull up my app to see if I have enough money or if I need to reload the app to order my drink. And it was all of, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. And all of a sudden the person behind me (sighs) and walks right in front of me to order. And I kind of was like, man, I think think I've been out of the world for too long. Am I in the wrong line? Okay. So I place my order. I get my drink. I start aimlessly walking around the store. And I paused at one aisle. It was dish soap, actually. I was just staring at different types of dish soap. That's what you do when you don't sleep, apparently. And this gentleman comes up. I probably shouldn't use the term gentleman at this point. And he says, are you going to pick one? And I said, I, I don't know. <laughs> he says, well, I need to get through. He said, okay, you can go through. At this point, I'm like, this is the worst idea I've had in a long time. <laughs> so I grab some random things, throw them in the cart, go to check out. And the person, I don't know what was happening, but the person who was checking out was getting louder the way she talked to this cashier. And to the point that all I heard was, I need your manager now. And you know, you're in that that point of like, well, I kind of want to know what's going on. (laughs) But I also should just go self-checkout, but I'm, I'm stuck now. And the this goes back and forth for a while, and you just see the cashier kind of slumping in posture. The manager comes over and does their thing on the computer, kind of scolds the cashier and goes about the day and I was like man so I go up I ask the cashier like how are you it's like it's my first day yikes 
man. And so I pay for whatever I bought, dish soap and flowers, something like that. And I'm walking out to the parking lot like, this is terrible. And all of a sudden I see this, this man standing in, in front of me and his shirt has all these bright red letters. I'm like, what does that say? And it says, I'm a meat-eating, gun-owning, Republican, anti-vaxxer. How else can I offend you? And I was like, wow. I mean, I don't care about the politics on your shirt. You have your beliefs, sure. But how else can I offend you? I get home and my husband's like, how was it? I'm like, it was terrible. I'm never leaving the house again. We the people are not terrible. We the people are good. We the people are beloved children of God. We the people are hubs of hope. We, the people, are communal. We need each other. We need to put down the boxing gloves, look people in the eyes, smile. It's a tough year. Tensions are high. You're gonna disagree with people. You're gonna disagree with people you're sitting right next to today. And guess what? You're still called to love. You're still called to be hope in the world. So this election year, I want you to pray. I want you to pray on why you vote the way you vote. What are your convictions? And then also remember that line, that when our hearts condemn us, that when we're full of emotion and full of rage, that why would they vote that way? Why would they be that way? God is greater than our hearts. God is greater than our emotions. God is greater than our voting. So submit the ballot and go feed somebody. Go sit with somebody. Go hug somebody because you are a hub of hope and that hope of Christ propels you into action. Amen, church. Let us pray. God, as we come before you this morning, our minds are filled with many images of people who are angry people who are in a rush, people who are just fed up with the world. And sometimes, God, that's us. Sometimes we're the ones in the parking lot. Sometimes we are the ones in line at Starbucks, breathing and huffing and cutting. Sometimes we're the ones in the soap aisle wondering why the person won't get out of our way. Sometimes we are the ones staying in a parking lot, just looking for a fight. And other times, God, we are in a place where it is our first day, or we're just a mom looking to get out from out under all of the pressures and stress of life. God, wherever we are coming from, remind us that we are human, that we are not in control, that this is your world, not ours, that we don't have to bend it to our will and our way. But instead, we are to bend to your will and way. And in so doing, look up from our own shoes, look up from our own self-centeredness and look around and see people who are in need. 
people that might need a smile or a hug or a how are you. People who simply need to stand in an aisle and stare at soap. People who just need to have one person smile at them to make a good first day at work. Remind us, God, that it doesn't take much to do your will and your way. It doesn't take much to make your kingdom come. Sometimes it's just a piece of bread. Sometimes it is simply, I forgive you. And in so doing, evil is conquered and your glory and kingdom come. God, we are reminded of the prayer that you taught us so long ago. There's a reason why we say it each week. It's because of its simplicity. And so we ask that in this simple prayer that you will allow it to go deep inside of us this week so that it will come out in so many different places. We say it like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation Through all the tumult and the strife can we keep from singing, friends? When we know that every time we open our mouths and we allow these voices to lift up all that is good about God and our world and ourselves, that in so doing, great things happen. 
that every time we get these things out right here and we give out of these, good things happen. That particularly when I give and Phyllis gives and Dave gives, right? We start pulling all that together, right? All of something, all of a sudden, something really amazing begins to happen. All of a sudden, we have put our hope in action, haven't we? And somehow, all of us pulling our money together, all of us pulling these actions together, transcend our politics and allow us to do good in the world. Ushers, come and receive this morning's offering. All right, this is uh, usually a band song, but I was feeling spunky when I put the list together. Um, so we're just going to have to go with it. Um, Whoever doesn't have a plate, I'm going to need the pastors. If you guys could help me out with this a little bit, I just need, like, uh, you to clap. I, I know, maybe not Justin. Maybe Danny, if you could just manage. <coughs> oh, my God. Barb, could you stand up, please, and just handle this? <laughs> Sit down. I'm embarrassed for you. Okay. So, <laughs> I just need a, if you could just manage that. Okay, I don't have Jeff or Dave or Kevin here. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the same. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let that river of life wash it all away. Good job, guys. If you've been searching, carrying burdens If you've been lost and looking for a home If you've been drifting, something is missing You should know that you are not alone Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river Guaranteed you'll never be the same There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the sea sins and all your guilty stains. Let that river of life wash it all away. Whoa. Come on down to the river. Oh. Come as you are. No time to waste. Open your heart. Don't be afraid. Jump on in. The water is fine. There's healing in the river of life. Come as you are, no time to waste. Open your heart, don't be afraid. Jump on in, the water is fine. There's healing in the river of life. Brother, sister, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the same. Sing that again. Brother, sister. Everything will change Let that river of life Wash it all away not spunky. I did put my spunky hair on today. Barb, thank you for leading us in that. Did you feel that? As you stood up and all of us clapped together, we all have different political affiliations in this room, yet that communal spirit singing and clapping, take that with you into this week, friends. And as you leave today, exchange your name tag with somebody else. Pray for them intentionally all week long. And may God bless you and keep you, shape you and mold you, love you and hold you today and all of your days. Thank you for being here, everyone.